In Game Maker 7, the menu text gets enlarged, but the spacing doesn't, so the menu items get crushed together. The menu icons are the same size in pixels as they would be at 100% scale. The icons on the bar at the top are also the same size in pixels as they would be at 100% scale, so are the icons in the resource tree, and so is the Game Maker text in the background. The Yo-Yo Games icon at the bottom of the resource tree is also the same size in pixels as it would be at 100% scale, but the allocated space for it does get scaled, so the logo does not fill the space that is allocated for it. Taking a look at the object properties window, the size of the window is too small by default, but of course, that can be resized. The items and the icons in the events column are a fixed height in pixels, but the text gets enlarged, so the text gets clipped at the bottom. The icons for the actions at the right are also a fixed size in pixels, but the text for each group gets enlarged, so the text overlaps the icons. The icons inside the buttons are also a fixed size in pixels. The icons in the events selector are also a fixed size in pixels. Looking at the execute code dialog, the icons on the bar at the top are a fixed size in pixels, and the bar is a fixed height in pixels. But text next to the self, other and object radio buttons gets enlarged, but the spacing between the radio buttons doesn't, so most of the text gets cut off. The height of the status bar at the bottom is a fixed height in pixels, but the text gets enlarged, so the text gets clipped at the bottom. The code itself gets enlarged. Looking at the sprite properties window, the icons on the buttons are a fixed size in pixels. The sprite itself is displayed at its native size in pixels. In the sprite editor dialog, the height of the status bar at the bottom is a fixed height in pixels, but the text gets enlarged, so the text gets clipped at the bottom. The menu text gets enlarged, but the spacing doesn't, so the menu items get crushed together. The icons at the top are a fixed size in pixels. In the image editor dialog, the tool buttons get enlarged, but the icons on them don't. In the sound properties window, the icons on the buttons are a fixed size in pixels. The handles on the volume and pan sliders are also a fixed size in pixels. In the background properties window, the background image itself is displayed at its native resolution, regardless of the DPI. The icons on the buttons are also a fixed size in pixels. Taking a look at the script properties window, the icons at the top are a fixed size in pixels. The top bar is also a fixed height in pixels. The script name text box is also a fixed size in pixels, but the word name and the script name text get enlarged, so they get clipped. The text on the status bar gets enlarged, but the status bar itself is still a fixed size in pixels, so the text gets clipped. The scroll bars and the code itself both get enlarged. Looking at the path properties window, the grid size is a fixed size in pixels. The icons at the top are also a fixed size in pixels. The text snap X and snap Y get enlarged, but the bar does not, so the text gets cut off at the bottom. The text boxes are also a fixed size in pixels, but the text inside them gets enlarged, so the text gets clipped. The status bar is also a fixed height in pixels, but the text on it gets enlarged, so the text gets clipped. The font properties window scales OK apart from the tick icon in the OK button. Taking a look at the Timeline Properties window, the icons for the actions at the right are also a fixed size in pixels, but the text for each group gets enlarged, so the text overlaps the icons. In the Room Properties window, the room itself is displayed at its native resolution, regardless of the DPI. In the Objects menu, the item spacing and the icons are both a fixed size in pixels, but the text gets enlarged, so you get overlapping text. The right arrows next to the folder items is also not visible at high DPI. The text in the game information dialog gets enlarged. The icons on the bar at the top are a fixed size in pixels, so is the height of the bar, but the font in the font size box gets enlarged, so the text is clipped. There is also overlapping text in the menus. In the global game settings dialog, under the constants tab, the height of each row of the table is a fixed size in pixels, but the font gets enlarged, so the text gets cut off at the bottom. The icons on the buttons at the bottom are also a fixed size in pixels but the buttons and the text get enlarged. The About Game Maker dialog gets enlarged, and so does the text, but the background image is the same size in pixels as at 100%, so it only fills the top left corner. In the Game Maker Help dialog, the text is the same size as it would be at 100%. The title text gets enlarged, but the line spacing is the same number of pixels as 100%, so it has overlapping text. 
In the save confirmation dialog, the question mark icon gets enlarged, but the space that it is allowed to occupy is the same size in pixels as 100%, so it gets cropped. In TTS Reader, the menu item spacing is a fixed size in pixels, but the font gets enlarged, so there is overlapping text. The icon bar at the top is a fixed height in pixels, and the icons are a fixed size in pixels, but the text below the icons gets enlarged, so the text gets cut off at the bottom. The three rightmost icons are missing at 200% scale. The icons at the right are also a fixed size in pixels. The spacing between the sliders at the bottom is also a fixed size in pixels, but the sliders get enlarged, so they are overlapping. The About TTS Reader dialog gets enlarged, but the image doesn't. In the Python installer, the text remains small, and the left image gets cut off at the bottom. In Universal USB installer, the logo in the top right is a fixed size in pixels, regardless of the DPI. Most of the text and items get enlarged, but the vertical spacing doesn't, so it gets crushed together and text gets cut off at the bottom. In Ultra ISO, the menu item spacing is a fixed size in pixels, but the font gets enlarged, so there is overlapping text. The icon and address bars are a fixed height in pixels, but the text gets enlarged, so the text gets clipped. Same with the status bar at the bottom. And the icons are a fixed size in pixels. In Day Ah Portal, the window is a fixed size in pixels, but the content gets enlarged, so the content doesn't fit in the window properly. Under the Free Shards tab, the login elements at the right are overlapping. The buttons in the bottom right of the window are a fixed size in pixels. Under the Custom Shards tab, there isn't enough space to fit all the content, and the bar at the bottom is one half cut off. The Add a Custom Server dialog is also a fixed size in pixels and has crushed together overlapping elements. Under Favorite Shards, the bar is a fixed height in pixels and text is clipped. Same with the IRC tab. The Settings dialog is also a fixed size in pixels and has crushed together overlapping elements. Same with the About dialog. In Main32, the list of games is a fixed size in pixels, regardless of the DPI. But the headings get enlarged. The picture at the right is also a fixed size in pixels, and the tabs don't display properly at high DPI. In Inspiration 9 IE, most of the UI just ignores the scaling and stays the same size in pixels as at 100%. The menus do get scaled, so do the scroll bars. The MDI caption buttons get scaled, but the icons inside don't. In Pro Desktop, the menus scale OK except from that the icons are the same size in pixels as at 100%. The icon bar at the top is a fixed size in pixels, but some text gets enlarged and gets clipped. Same with the icon bars at the bottom and at the right. The tabs at the right get scaled. The icons and icon spacing of the items under each tab are a fixed size in pixels, but the text gets enlarged, so it overlaps. The logo in the About Pro Desktop dialog is a fixed size in pixels.